Today, I am going to go over three AI agents that do the work of an $84 billion industry, and 97% of leaders don't even know they exist. The beautiful thing about it, too, is there's zero coding required, and they just went public within the last two weeks. At least two out of the three of them have. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ryan Staley. I specialize in AI transformation implementation. I've worked with over a thousand go to market executives and spent over 2,000 hours in large language models so you don't have to. So, today, what we're going to go over are these new no code AI agents. Okay. So, basically, they've eliminated 10 hours of weekly work for me alone. And I'm showing you the exact setup that took only seven minutes to deploy. So, watch me reveal the new agent tools from OpenAI, Google, and Perplexity that can change everything. My instant deploy system, and it only takes seven minutes to set up. All right, without delay, let's get into it. So I'm going to walk you through each one of the three of these, and you're going to see how simple and easy it is right now. So I'm going to share my screen with you, and you're going to see the beauty of it. We're going to start with OpenAI. So OpenAI literally just released a brand new capability out that's flying under the radar. But because I've been working with no-code tools as well, I'm finding some really interesting things, okay? So what you're going to see here is if you click on it, let's click a new tab so you can see how to access it. There's a couple ways in which you could leverage this, all right? The first one is when you click on the, the drop down, you're going to see ChatGPT 4.0 with scheduled tasks. Now, granted, it's only in beta. That's one area to access it. The other area where you could access this is in here where you're seeing in the customized GPT. Right above that, it says tasks, okay? So this will give you a macro view. As you can see here, I have multiple tasks that I've created ranging from curating podcast episodes, summarizing and others trending YouTube topics. So I've kind of gone through a, a different range of them. And I wanted to test this for you. So now let me go back and look, and you're going to see some really cool things here. What I've decided to do is create these tasks, but also drop them in a new projects folders. Basically for all my projects that I have right here, I have agent automations. Now I've been working more and more with agents. I'm an early agent builder for agent.ai, which is HubSpot's platform. I'm also using it in other no code platforms. And it takes a lot of work just to do simple web scraping. Now you have the ability to do that instantly. Now, what I'm going to tell you, though, is this isn't perfect. This is in beta. There's some hiccups to it and some fine tuning that needs to take place. But I wanted to show you the early examples. You can start leveraging instantly. All right. So one of the things that I did is I looked up funding announcements. OK. And for this exact, um, you know, alert, or I should say, funding announcement that I created, I did it across three. Now watch, it's almost like a mini GPT. So you have to title it, name it. So I wanted to look at, okay, three large private equity companies. And the instructions are search for any new funding announcements from Tom Bravo, Insight, and KKR. For each announcement, include the following, new investments, brief description, and the name of their executives. Now what I have it do is you have a scheduling in terms of, do you want it not to repeat daily, weekly, monthly, annually, custom? Or do you want it at a certain time of day? I want it at seven times, 7 a.m. my time, okay? So in terms of doing that, that's super simple and you could set these up for anything. As you could see, once you do that, it, it starts replying in the thread with where the capabilities are. So what you're gonna see is the reason why I put these in a folder and have a different thread for each task is so they don't get all jumbled together. As you could see, there's some really good things within here. Now, some of these are a little bit dated, but at the same time, I see others that are in here, they're really solid and are more recent. So I think what's going to happen is this is going to get better over time. And like I tell my clients, this is the worst version of AI that you've ever seen. I've also done this for trending topics. Uh, this is another example of something that I did. And as you can see, I did this on AI and X, it's trending topics on AI. And basically what it's starting to do is integrate areas about X, not actually off of X. So that's maybe some prompting that I need to improve. And it talks about all the different areas. And the cool thing about it is it's actually got a link that I could click on and actually reference the source. So some pretty cool things here. And it's got a summary of sources at the bottom. Okay. So that's agent number one. So now you could set up real streaming information. It could be about clients. It could be about prospects. It could be about industries. It could be anything you want. You can set up your own console here. You can even do it for an individual client. If you're a key account manager or you have hyper-focused accounts that you're on and get updates on those companies every day, every week, you name the frequency. Okay, so number two, we're going to go over that right now. We're going to pop over to Gemini. 
So within Gemini, one of the beautiful things about Gemini is I have both versions, right? I have the workspace version and I have the personal version. For some reason, workspace is very limited. So I've noticed there's a lot of enterprise clients that are like, hey, this isn't that good. What's the deal with Gemini? Well, the weird thing about it is I think it's because Google got burned before on the images and some of the challenges they had with uh, misrepresenting history uh, in terms of pictures that were created. So one of the things that they do on the personal side is they give you ex access to all these experimental models. So the one that we're focusing on, 1.5 Pro with deep research. So this is basically like a deep agentic research that looks through multiple sources and it only takes about two to five minutes. Now, I'm going to show you some examples of some of a, a search that I did. And because it takes that time, I don't want you to sit through and watch this, but I'm going to show you the output and what it did. Okay. This is pretty wild. So one of the things that I was doing is research on my personas. And as you can see, I had a, some chats here, but I said, okay, give me 10 demographic personas. that are just like real people who would be buyers of AI skill transformation for sales, marketing, executive teams. Exactly what I do. Example will be CEOs, chief revenue officer, chief marketing officer. Yeah. He's at those levels. Can you have them answer this question critically? And then what content would you like to consume on two different platforms, LinkedIn and YouTube? So I did this by design because I was trying to nail down more of a content plan for both of these two platforms. Because as you know, this video is you're watching on one of those two platforms. So I'm wanting to come up with that hypothetical example. And so you could do the same thing, but there's many use cases. You could have a look at a landing page. You could have a look at your website. You could have a look at multiple different areas to deconstruct it. You could have a look at the deal, right? So what it's going to do is give you 10 different examples of what those personas would look like. Now, here's the beautiful part of it. I think it's hilarious that it calls it interspecies interactions, a complex web of relationships, right? But basically it created that. And what you're going to see here is it created a whole table on it with fake, you know, fake like personas of ages, background, motivations, challenges, what they want to see on LinkedIn and YouTube, which I thought was pretty cool with different ages of C CMOs, VPs, chief strategic officers. And the other thing it did is I asked it to create a content calendar and it started to do that as well. So content, topic, formula hook, point of view, and goal, right? And some of these are pretty damn good. Now I have to go through and sort this. However, like, I think like, you know, three ways to help create personalized customer journeys. I think this is kind of an inception video for something like that, right? I can create a whole carousel post. So it goes through that. Uh, and then it, it gives a lot more examples of YouTube content uh, at the same time, one long form form for video for a week. Now, the other thing that it did not do, or I forgot to show you, is the, the work that it went through. So what it's going to do is it's going to give you a plan. And once it does that, after you give it a prompt, it's going to give you a step-by-step -step plan and you can edit it. All you have to do in edit it is say, edit plan. And I asked to edit the research and asked me what I wanted to do. And I said, okay, you know, update number one to be more complete. So I updated it and then it went through, did the research. And if we click on the first report that it did, this is like the final updated report. Let's, let's look at that. This is what it did. Okay. So this research engine went through 67 websites and this happened in like four minutes. Okay. So it went through those 67 websites and then provided this whole detailed analysis. And then the awesome thing about it is you could open it in docs. So then you could have this here. You can input this into a large language model like Claude, which is really good at writing, Notebook LM, or even ChatGPT, and get a really good sense of, you know, leveraging all this data at scale. And projects are one of those other areas. So that's number two. I was blown away by that. And by the way, the market research industry is an $84 billion industry. So you could literally take this, do it for pricing, competition, for so many different use cases. But I want to hit this last one. And this one's, think of it as kind of like ChatGPT is like micro tasks. So those are agentic micro tasks. If you look at Google, Google Deep Research, this is like, like almost like a narrow focus job of a researcher. And then this other one, which is like more real time specific data against versus broad examples. Okay. And so this is on perplexity.ai. Now, one of the things is I have the $20 pro version, as you can see here. 
Now, there's two types of search you could do. You can click it on or off. Pro, what I realize, has agentic behavior when it basically analyzes and looks at data and tries to give you an answer. So, for example, I said, help me identify the top five competitors to Gone and create a table that includes their G2 ratings, overall social sentiment with a typo, and pricing model. Now, what Pro Search does, and this is what I've been blown away with when I've clicked on the Pro Search, is, and I can show you how fast it's right because this one doesn't work as long. This is the steps that it goes through for each one. So this is multi-step reasoning, just like the PhD level reasoning engines that that OpenAI has released with ChatGPT 401. So I'm going to create a new thread and I'm going to show you what this looks like in real time. I'm just going to copy the prompt. We're going to do that and we're going to see what happens, right? So you're going to see how fast this works within perplexity. Now, in addition, not a lot of people know this, but while this is building out, you do have the ability to go in the settings and change the model. So you could actually use ChatGPT 01 advanced reasoning in here with search. I found kind of mixed results with it. It's really slow, but at the same time, I think it's got potential. So let's keep it on perplexity. So this one's a little bit better with more precise real-time information that's shorter. So as you can see, it pulled up Gone's top competitors, talks about social sentiment, G2 rating, starting at 1200 per user, and then it goes down the pricing model of each one of their competitors. So you can literally do this to analyze your market position. And then the awesome thing about it is what you could see is um, you could also follow up is what unique features are for each competitor, right? And so now you could just build off of this and go deeper and deeper. And this is something, like I said, that would take a long time scrolling through a ton of websites. And now you can go through it literally in seconds. So then it breaks down the competitor of the unique features for each one in terms of chorus, sales loft, meet record, Voma, cloud talk, all right? The other thing that I don't want to gloss over is there's a lot of great data that you can look at, infographics on here. I think this is pretty interesting. You can go on their website and see what they specialize in. Um, and other areas that it's taking the data from in terms of gone or other providers, okay? You could even go deeper if you want on this and you're gonna see search images. If I wanna search images, it'll, it'll create more images of detailed. And like I said, there's some like very good visual content on here. If you look at this, even some battle cards, you could search videos. You can generate images as well, which I haven't used that really, no videos on this, for example. So. Just to kind of wrap up things, we went through three agents that you have. Number one is we went through the overall OpenAI tasks, right? Which is a micro release of their agent capability. Number two, we went through Google Deep Research, which is going through 67 websites in four minutes to get you the answer that you need for something complex. And we want more pointed solutions, not as a depth in terms of research report, we have the complex multi-step reasoning that literally is done in seconds with perplexity. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more from Ryan Staley, myself, and the future of AI and work and how it relates to what's possible to become superhuman, check out my newsletter. I go over this topics every week and you won't miss a bit from it. But appreciate you checking this out and I will see you all on the next video.